What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi here, and today we're going to continue our journey talking about anxiety disorders, and it's making me anxious just thinking about it. Today we're going to focus on the serotonin 1A receptors and the role of medications such as buspirone in the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder. I still get asked about this all the time, and my thoughts on these medications really haven't changed. So let's jump right into learning about serotonin 1A receptors and the role in the treatment of anxiety disorders. I talked to you guys in the last video about anxiety treatments and I said that buspirone has an effect size which is a measure essentially of how clinically effective this medication is. It's very, very small. So small in fact that you might not be capable of seeing any cl clinical improvement when tracking patient symptoms during treatment. Now we know that psychiatry is filled with examples of medications that should work much better than they do in clinical practice. And buspirone happens to be one of those examples. It's really a shame because in the end, it has a benign side effect profile and may even improve sexual desire in hypoactive sexual desire disorders. Let's go over the mechanism of action briefly. So the primary way that buspirone works is by partial agonism at the 5-HT1A receptor. Now buspirone will exert its effects on the presynaptic 5-HT1A receptors. Those are called autoreceptors as well as working as a full agonist postsynaptically at the 5-HT1A receptor. We should be looking at evidence for buspirone in anxiety disorders, and we go to the randomized controlled trial data for buspirone in social anxiety disorder as well as panic disorder, and what we find is that there's no difference between the medication and placebo. In the case of panic disorder, up to 100 milligrams per day was tried and still proved ineffective. This did result in some people calling for higher dosing in GAD, for example, 90 to 120 milligrams per day. Now, as I noted, there is some evidence that buspirone can improve sexual dysfunction, specifically something called hypoactive sexual desire, and this is the primary mechanism of action, 5-HG1A partial agonism, for the medication filbanserin, which is used to treat female hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Now, other medications with similar mechanisms of action attempted to gain FDA approval, but failed to show efficacy. Specifically, the medications Velazidone and Bordeoxetine, which are newer antidepressant medications that I've talked extensively about, use 5-HT1A partial agonism as part of their mechanism to treat depression. Now, neither of these medications has been approved for the treatment of anxiety disorders by the FDA, and that's not without the manufacturers attempting to gain FDA approval for GAD. So to kind of wrap things up, guys, not much has changed for me regarding the use of buspirone and serotonin 1A partial agonists as a treatment for anxiety disorders. We know these medications offer little ability to improve anxiety symptoms and have proven to be ineffective when the mechanism is combined with other well-established antidepressant mechanisms it's best we probably move away or in a different direction when it comes to the treatment of anxiety. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to like, subscribe, and share the content. It really helps me to keep this project going, and I will see you guys in the next video.